What's up, you two? Simply unluckier. And it's time for a blast from the past with a classic 2003 Dark Crisis 36 pack booster box. I want to ask you guys to check out the channel and subscribe for more epic Yu Gi Oh videos. Alright, you guys, so this is to correlate with our Magician's Force, the booster box opening. Uh, we did a 36 pack opening of that box as well. We did it in three parts. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this box in two parts. It's a little less valuable than the Magician's Force box, so uh, two parts should suffice. And also, that will end up being 18 packs per part. So uh, these videos may get a little longer. I'm going to be taking some whiffs. I'm going to be checking out the cards, talking about their effects. And uh, it's going to be very exciting. And then a little uh, info for you guys before we get started. The giveaway is ending August 20th. Um, so if you guys have not already checked it out, go check out the giveaway video that I have on this channel. It's also on my other Simply Network uh, channels as well. So go check that out if you haven't. And I'm giving away seven, I think, booster boxes or six booster boxes. Um, a play mat for, from Konami. It's very, very epic giveaway. Go check that out. All right, you guys. Dark Crisis Classic 2003 booster box. I think this was the end of 2003. Let's pop it open. I guess the unlimited printing would probably technically be 2004. Whatever. Dark Crisis. Here we go. So, some of the cards inside. Oh, thanks to our friends at Ultra. We have the Gurren and Lagan playmat. I wanted to bring it out. One of my favorite playmats they have. Along with uh, the broom, uh, blue, light blue, pro mat sleeves. And so, some of the good cards inside of Dark Crisis. This is a 36 pack box, so we cannot pull a Secret Rare Vampire Lord. We can only pull Judgment of Anubis. Um, Pulling Judgment of Anubis wouldn't really be at the top of my list of cards to pull because usually a Secret Rare will take the place of an Ultra if we pull it. So, uh, Ultra Rares though from the set that I would like to pull, of course, is the Almighty, the one and only, the Exodia Necros. And I know this will end up being used for a Booster Box Battle and that card wouldn't be able to really be played, but still, Exodia Necros would be incredible to pull. Um, under that, Ultra Rares, we have Reflect Bounder. Um, you have some of the Guardian cards in here as well. Really awesome, fun. Uh, different equipments to go with those as well. And then you have the Skull Archfiend of Lightning, I believe. Summon Skull basically, but Archfiend style. Um, it would be awesome if we could put one of him as well. So, a uh, ton of cards here that I want to get. A Rare Rise, there's Mahu Garzet, right? That's how you say his name. And then there's the Skill Drain, of course. Um, super Rares, there's DD Warrior Lady, Butterfly, Butterfly Dagger. <laughs> Butterfly Dagger. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So first pack, we're going to be doing one side for this part. So this will be... 18 packs, 36 pack box. It'd be pretty incredible if we somehow pulled Vampire Lord, but I'm pretty sure it's 100% you cannot from a 36. Okay, here we go. So first pack from 2003. I think December is when this set came out. Just give it a whiff. Ah, the blast from the past, you guys. Here we go. First pack, here we go. Wow, Dark Crisis. It's been a very long time since I've opened this on this channel. Okay, we're starting off with Arsenal Robber. We have Dark Scorpion Gorg the Strong. Oh, the Dark Scorpion cards would probably be pretty decent um, for a booster box battle here. When this card inflicts battle damage to one of your opponent's life points, you can select and activate one of the following. Return a monster card from opponent's side of the field to the owner's deck, to the top of the owner's deck. Send one card from the top of your opponent's deck to the grave. That's actually pretty dang good. Um, it's a little weak though, 18, 15. Fairy of the Spring, DD Trainer, a poor goblin that was sucked into a different dimension. However, he's doing his best with his new destiny. <laughs> That's awesome. Contract with the Abyss for Dark Master Zork is in here, I think. Uh, this card is used ritual summon any dark monster. You must also offer monsters from your field or hand uh, for level of stars of that ritual. Twin Swords Flashing Light Trice. This is the double attacking minus 500. Gravity Axe Garl. These cards were pretty fun in Duel Links in the beginning of uh, when I first started playing. And Altar for Tribute. And Iron Blacksmith Kotetsu is actually a very good card for a booster box battle. And in general, it was pretty good um, when it first came out in Dark Crisis. Okay. Next pack here. Man, I just want to take a whiff every single pack. And so remember, once again, you guys, these will be used for the booster box battle. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. Um, the only issue, I think, is just getting enough monsters out of here. But at 36 packs, I think we'll be fine. Frozen Soul, Staunch Defender, the Marauding Captain versus some sort of crazy dude. Archfiend's Roar, Thousand Needles, Dark Bishop. Archfiend, I was going to say, the Archfiend cards in here would also be pretty cool. Um, I know I mentioned the Summon Skull of Archfiend or whatever his name is, but um, yeah, getting Pandemonium would be sweet as well. So this is the Dark Bishop Archfiend. I believe he is 
This controller, when it resolving this effect, it's roll a six-sided die. So when an Archfiend card on your side of the field is specifically designated as a target, you get a one, three, or six, negate and destroy the opponent's card. Bile Pun Archfiend. Ojamas are in here, Ojama Green. A token Thanksgiving, destroy all tokens on the field, increase your life points. And Morale Boost, part of the um, infinite combo. Uh, morale Boost, I believe, with uh, Fire Princess and Gear Free the Iron Knight and Butterfly Dagger Elna. Was that the four card combo? So you would have butter. So you have Gear Free the Iron Knight. This was a combo for a few months before they banned uh, Butterfly Dagger. So it was Gear Free the Iron Knight. You play Butterfly Dagger. Butterfly Dagger says um, whenever it's destroyed, return it to your hand. And it's an equipment, and then Gearfried says automatically destroy the equipments uh, that are equipped to this monster. So you equip Butterfly Dagger, it's an infinite combo, just goes to the grave, goes to your hand, goes to the grave, goes to your hand. And then Morale Boost says each time a player and equips an equip spell, that player's life points increases by 1,000. Each time a play an equip spell card is destroyed, removed from the field, inflict 1,000 damage to the control of the equip. So um, Fire Princess says whenever you gain life points, deal 500 damage to your opponent, I believe. Something like that. So some, somewhere around there. I may be one card off, but it was just a similar combo to that. So you could just have those four cards, play your Butterfly Dagger 10 times, or 20 times, whatever. Dead. The Dark Crisis Infinite Combo. All right, here we go. Reminds me of when people first started using Solemn Judgment. I remember I had a friend who would use Life, life Absorbing Machine with Solemn Judgment. Oh man. Ray of Hope. Ninken Dog, a ninja dog who has mastered extreme ninjutsu. Through hard training, it has learned the technique to metaphose, metamorphose into a human being. Uh, Gyakugiri Panda, a very powerful card with uh, Ojama Trio. Dark Scorpion Mene the Strong. Some would say this is the best Dark Scorpion because it can search out other cards. When this card inflicts battle damage to opponent's life points, activate one effect. It's also a four stars. Select one card that includes Dark Scorpion from its uh, name or named Clip the Trap Remover from your deck and add it to your hand. And then select one card that includes Dark Scorpion and its card name, or Cliff from your graveyard or add it to your hand. So you choose one of those. Basically gets your Dark Scorpion cards from your deck to your hand, which is pretty nice. And uh, when I would read cards like that, I, was, I would always think, why is Cliff not a Dark Scorpion? Dark Scorpion Cliff. Like, just, you know, Cliff the Trap Remover. You know, I don't know. And nice, our first super rare. Actually a really cool card, Mirage Knight. Um, this card can only be special summoned by the effect of Dark Flare Knight. When this card battles another monster during damage count, increase the attack of this card by the original attack of the opponent's monster. During the end phase of the card, this card was involved in battle. Remove this card from play. Ouch. But very cool card. Look at that scythe. Uh, Guardian Cast. Checkmate. Final Attack Orders was actually a pretty good side deck card for a bit. As long as card remains face in the field, all face up monsters in the field are changed to attack position. And then Guardian Elma for Butterfly Dagger. Alright, so we'll go ahead and sleeve our first foil card. So, out of a 36 pack box, we're hoping for. Because um, in 24 pack box, you would pull two Ultras, I believe. So, for 36, we're hoping for three, maybe just maybe four. Or two, uh, th two or three in a secret rare, you know. Like I said, I think Judgment of Anubis isn't really a priority to this point, but it's still a really nice, it's really nice to pull a secret rare. Uh, Battle Scarred, Acrobat Monkey, an autonomous monkey type of robot that was developed by cutting edge technology. It's a very, it moves very acrobatically. Okay, Sockside Samurai. Uh, shooting Starbow Seal. Uh, this was an interesting card because it allows your, uh, your monster to attack directly. Um, but it gives it minus 1,000 attack, but you can also use this on your opponent's monster, giving them minus 1,000 attack to potentially kill it. Fear from the Dark, a 1,700 zombie. When it's sent from your hand or deck to the grave by your opponent's card effect, special summon this card from your side of the field. So, against Vampire Lord, that could be good. Uh, Battle Footballer, a 2,100 four-star monster. Precious cards from beyond. When you successfully, successfully tribute summon or set a monster that require two more tributes, draw two cards from your deck. Goblin of Greed, 1,800 defense four-star. And Archfiend's Oath. I believe that was the combo card with Convulsion of Nature back in the day. Uh, once per turn, you pay 500 life points to declare one card name. Pick up the top card of your deck, and if the card is the name, add it to your hand. If not, send it to the grave. So Convulsions of Nature would allow you to flip your deck upside down, and so you would know your top card always, and so you'd be able to use Archfiend's Oath and just every turn draw an extra card. It was just one of those cool combos back in the day. All right, it's time to do another whiff. Here we go. 
<sighs> Love it. Feel like we're back in the past, back in 2003, right? When we take that, that's that whiff. Uh, Must ring of the dark scorpions. You can only activate this card when you have Don's Lou face up on your side of the field. You can special summon any of the cards from your hand that include dark scorpion in the card name or cliff, and you cannot special summon two cards with the same name. Okay, spell reproductive. Gaga Giga, actually pretty nice. 1854 star monster, very good for a booster box battle. Uh, the young evildoer used to have an evil heart, but by meeting a special person, he discovered justice. Justice. And there's a whole story with Gaga Giga. Non-spells casting area. Ooh, Sukiyomi, the monarch killer. Um, Cause all monarchs have a thousand defense, so Sukiyomi's 1100. Sukiyomi really didn't gain popularity. It was probably a little bit after its release, but I feel like fairly quickly it was used just for combos with Magician of Faith and Mask of Darkness. Because I feel like um, this is Dark Crisis, and when was Prime Material Dragon? Prime Material Dragon was, what, three, four sets? See, I get confused. But either way, um, Prime Material Dragon had the effect of discarding cards to stop destruction effects, and so that was used with um, Time Seal. So that was Tsukiyomi Mask of Darkness Time Seal. That was one of those decks. And it was actually pretty popular for a while, so. Sugiyomi. Because that's a technically an infinite combo. It's a three-card infinite combo, it is, yeah. So um, it technically doesn't win you the game, it just allows doesn't allow your opponent to draw any more cards if they can't get rid of the combo. So Mask of Darkness, uh, Time Seal, they skip their next draw phase. Mask of Darkness, flip back face up, grab your mask time seal, you know, set it back face down. Use Sukiyomi, flip your mask of darkness back face down. So wombo combos. Uh, check the yellow. This guy returns cards to the owner's hand, and then see one card in your opponent's deck. And if it does not, return to the bottom. Dice reroll. Solga, 1700, and Desecrow. God, I could talk for days about classic, classic cards. Okay. Fairy of the Spring. DD Trainer. Agido. Kelbeck. And nice, a secret rare judgment of Anubis. So we did get the secret rare, so definitely not going to complain. Um, wow. Gosh, I really want to get Vampire Lord, though. Judgment of Anubis. Look at that. Straight from the pack. Drag down in the grave, very powerful card. Rod of Silence. Final. It's the final countdown. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, but the final countdown. Pay 2,000 after 20 turns have passed. After this card's activation. Um... Counting the turn you activate this card, you win the duel. Definitely wouldn't happen in the current format of Yu-Gi-Oh. But wow, Judgment of Anubis. It's got a little... That's so cool. I haven't seen this card in so long. Uh, it's discard one card from your hand to negate the activation of the effect of a spell card controlled by your opponent that includes the effect of destroying spell or trap cards on the field. Then destroy it. You can destroy one face-up monster then you can destroy one face of monster opponent's side of the field and inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's attack and destroy that monster. Wow. So, uh, Heavy Storm, Hyper Feather Duster, watch out. MST even. Okay. It has to be a spell card. That's the problem with it. Negate the activation of the effect of a spell card controlled by an opponent. So, wouldn't stop monsters that destroy traps or magics and it wouldn't stop spells, or, uh, traps. Judgment of Anubis, though. So we got our secret rare card. That's awesome. Hopefully, we can get still to get three ultras. That would be an amazing box. Keldio. Keldo. Sakuretsu Armor. Definitely going to want to be playing three of those. Um, this was the poor man's Mirror Force back in the day. You can only activate this card when your opponent declares attack. Destroy the attacking monster. <laughs> I remember. I was one of those kids that couldn't afford Mirror Force. Uh, Round of Mind's Eye. Blindly loyal, loyal Goblin. This is one of the 18 attack four stars. Field of cannot be switched. Ooh, Skill Drain Rare. That's nice. Um, this allows you to use, uh, you know, your 2,400 monsters that have terrible effects that hurt you by negating those effects. Skill Drain. Bile Pond Archfiend. You can negate all your Archfiend effects. <laughs> Ojama. Token Thanksgiving Morale Boost. Wow. Sukiyomi and Skill Drain. Some nice rares there. Okay, we're getting close to halfway through for the first sign of our... Ooh! The Contract with Exodia. I love that picture. Dark Squadron, that's a sign, you guys. I think it's short print as well, um, but we're going to pull Exodia Necross in here. It's not that easy to pull. Arsenal Robber, Gork, Des Feral Imp, 16 and 18, by the way. One of the most powerful four-star stats, because overall it's 3,400. 
Flip select one card in your graveyard and add it to your deck. Ooh, another Kotetsu. Pandemonium Watchbear. As long as this Pandemonium is on your side of the field, um, it cannot be destroyed by Carlos. Cestus of Dalga. This card is for fairies. Increase the attack by 500 and inflicts battle damage to your opponent's life. Increase your life by that much. Really Eternal Rest. I never really understood this name, but okay. Really Eternal. Why not just Eternal Rest? <laughs> Destroy all monsters equipped with equipped cards. That's sweet that we got our secret rare. So, I think we're exactly halfway with this pack. Staunch the Arch. <laughs> Staunch Defender. Arch means roar. Pay 500 life points. Special summon an Arch Fiend monster from your graveyard. Cannot be offered as a tribute under any conditions and is destroyed during the end phase. So, you can still use it for Xyz summons and secret summons. Thousand Needles. Shadow Knight Arch Here's our 2000 four star. You gotta pay 900 life points, that's why you use your skill drain though. And Mudora, 1500, 1800. Increases by 200 points for every fairy type monster in your grave. Battle Footballer again. Precious Cards Beyond, Goblin of Greed, Archfiend's Oath. That Convulsion of Nature combo wombo. Very nice. Alright, halfway through, let's give it a whiff. Make sure we're back in 2003. Ah, here we go. TD Trainer, Agido, Kelbeck, Battle Scarred, and nice, Terror King Archfiend. So that was two supers in a row, so definitely no uh, four pack ratio for this box. Um, 2000 attack, you cannot normal summon or flip summon this card unless you have an Archfiend monster on your side of the field. Control of this card pays 800 during each standby. Wow. When this card is specifically designated as a target, roll a dice. Also negate the effect of effect monsters destroyed by this card. So he's got the Dark Roller Hot as effect built in. Drag down. Arsenal Summoner. Arsenal Summoner is really good as well. Um, it's a flip effect monster. Select one card that includes Guardian in its name. And add it from your deck to your hand. And it says some cards you cannot select. But at the same time, there's still a lot of cards you can We got our 2,000, 1,500 monster. Dark Crisis. The pandemonium begins. The insanity. The darkness. We got our Archfiend Snatch Steel. Ooh, there's our first pandemonium. I love that picture. Sakuretsu Armor again. Rod of the Mind's Eye. Blindly Loyal Goblin. Archfiend Soldier, 1900 attack monster, an expert at battle who belongs to a crack diabolical unit. His, he's famous because he always gets the job done. File Pond, Ojama Green, token Thanksgiving morale boost. Alright. So, got all different rares, no duplicates and rares yet. We got a lot of the good ones as well, so that's exciting. Okay, here we go. If we do pull Exodia Necros, can we throw Exodia in this deck? Why not? Just kidding. Mene the Thorn again. Nice. Arsenal Robber. Gorg. Different Dimension Gate. Not a bad card. Select one monster from each and your and your opponent's side of the field. Remove from the play. When this card is destroyed and sent to the grave, return those monsters from the field in the same battle positions as they were removed. So, this card's combo worked well with the giant True Nade and... Um, other cards like Spiritualism that would bounce cards to your hand because it says when this card is destroyed and sent to the grave, the monsters come back. So the way you use this is with your DD Survivor or your DD Scout plane. And um, you would remove that card, which comes back anyways when it's removed. And then you remove one of your opponents and then you would bounce this card to your hand. And when you bounce this card, your opponent's monster stays removed and your DD card comes back anyway. So that was the way to use that card. It could be good in boost, good booster box battle just to gain some advantage in the first place and get rid of opponent's monster, even though you may actually lose a card for that. Cyber Raider, Pandemonium Watch Bear, Cestus of Dalga, and really, Eternal Rest. And really, Eternal Rest, by the way, can also be used for your advantage. If you're playing Equips, you can equip your opponent's cards and destroy them. Once again, that would be a minus one for you, but still at the same time, gaining some advantage like that could be good. Oh, 
classic Yu-Gi-Oh. Easy to understand, hard to master. Archfiend's Roar, Thousand Needles, 1800 defense again. There's our Shadow Knight, Keldo. And Different Dimension Dragon. I haven't seen that forever. Uh, the effect of this Spell or Trap card cannot destroy this card unless the Spell or Trap specifically targets this card. This card cannot be destroyed as a result of battle. Let the monster that has 19 or, or less attack. Hmm. Precious cards from Beyond, Goblin Agreed. Deal with the Dark Ruler. Oh, this is for Berserk Dragon. Special summon one Berserk Dragon from your hand or deck. Okay. So we got four supers and a secret so far. Maybe, hopefully, we can get one more ultra from this side. God, we're pulling a good amount of foils. Okay. Here we go. Gagagigo again, 1850, non spell casting. Ray of Hope. Ian Ken Dog. He's an 1800, by the way. Oh, nice. Great. Mahu Garzette. Dude, this is nice. The attack of this card becomes twice the original attack of the attributed. So this was really good even back in the day because you tribute 1800, 1900. You got like 4,000, 3,600 monster. Twin Swords of Flashing Light. Try to imagine using that on the great Mahu Garzette. Uh, but you want to watch out for like skill drain though with that guy because he goes straight to zero. Gravity Axe Grarl. Altar for Tribute. And Black Ironsmith Blacksmith. Iron Blacksmith. Kotes. All right, here we go. Four more packs left for this first part, you guys. Going through these classic 2003 cards. Here we go. Ooh, a little discoloration there. Sasuke Samurai number two. Once per turn during your main phase, you can pay enter on the life points. If you do until the end phase, spell and trap cards cannot be activated. Shooting Star Bow, Frozen Soul, Staunch Defender, Guardian Bow. This is the guy that, whenever he destroys a monster, he gains a thousand points. And has the Dark Roller effect. Negate effects and monsters destroyed by this. We still haven't pulled the Guardian Bow, though. Drag down. KS. Arsenal Summoner. Battle Footballer. Alright, you guys. Three more packs. Here we go. I think it's time. Our last whiff for this part. Let's bring it back. So nostalgic. Rod of Mind's Eye. Mustering of the Dark Squad. Spell Reproduction. Infernal Queen. To go with our Bishop and our King. Yeah, we got the Terror King. We got the Bishop and we got the Queen. And we got the Soldier. KS. Checkmate. Offer one Archfiend monster your side of the field as a tribute. During this turn, you activate this card. One Terror King Archfiend on your side of the field can attack your opponent directly. Attack orders. Checkmate. So there's like a chess theme, by the way, if you guys haven't noticed, for the Archfiend cards. The bishop, the queen, the king. They even, even stands like the king or something from chess. Does Pandemonium look like a chessboard. Agito, Kelbeck, Battle Scarred, Acrobatic Monkey, Metalizing Parasite, a Lunatite. Hopefully, I don't pull any more of this. Uh, Mahu Garzette. This is the seven star. Comes, the attack becomes the combined of the two monsters you tribute. Pandemonium. Really eternal rest. Rod of the Mind's Eye. When a monster equipped with this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, that damage becomes a thousand. Huh, so you can use that on your opponents or your monster. Last pack of Destiny for our first part here, you guys. So we went through 36 packs. So this is 18 packs, our 18th pack here. Dun 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 dun. Can we finish with an ultra rare? Dun 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 dun. dun. Give it to us. Kaiba! Here we go. Shadow Knight. Keldo. Incandescent Ordeal. Come on, Skull Archfiend Lightning. Oh, Reflect Bounder! Nice! That's just as good. Oh, baby! Wow! Ultra Rare Reflect Bounder! That is how you end it right there in the last pack of the first part. Woo! I haven't seen this guy in so long. Reflect Bounder, you guys. Let's see if we can get a good look at him. Wow. What do you do in the anime? Was it who attacked this guy? I don't know, but the anime they had 4,000 life points, so Reflect Bounder is crazy. Wow, that is so cool. 
So the bad thing about Reflect Bounder is it always dies, but it was still pretty good, especially in light and dark decks when it first initially came out, uh, Chaos decks, um, because just it was a good light monster that got more damage dealt to your opponent, and um, you know getting a light and dark in the grave was very useful for getting out your Chaos Sorcerers or your Black Luster Soldier Envoys of the end of the beginning. When this card, uh, face up attack resistance card is attacked by a monster, your opponent's side of the field become before damage count is resolved. Uh, this card inflicts damage to your opponent equal to the attack of the attacking monster. After damage count, this card is destroyed. So it's automatically destroyed, but at the same time, it does reflect damage back. So you're, they're at least going to take 1700. So if they attack with like a 300 monster, you know, they'll take the 300 and then 14. Or if they attack with a summon skull, they'll take 25. Very cool. Reflect Bounder. I still remember when he was using this show. I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then, of course, this is a machine. So there's also it was help, helpful for machine decks. You know, limited removal of this guy. Boom, boom, pow. Rock that swagger. <laughs> what an epic last pack. We did end up getting an ultra rare. And we got a secret rare. And we got four supers. This box is looking fantastic. Chick. Oh, our first falling down. One of the short prints as well. Um, was that? Des Crook and Zolgan. Uh, falling down is the stash deal for Archfiends. Destroy this card if there's no face-up Archfiend card on your side of the field. Take control of one of your opponent's face-up monsters. Inflict 800 damage to your life points during each of your opponent's standby phases. So, uh, you can use this card to gain advantage on the field, uh, you know, giving yourself monsters, or you can just use it right away and then tribute that monster for a tribute summon of some, some kind. Very nice. So, our snatch deal for Archfiends. Another Sakuretsu armor. Wow, I cannot wait to get into the second part of this booster box opening, you guys. It is so exciting opening these classic packs. And I love it when we get good ratios like this as well. So hopefully we get an additional two Ultras on the left side. Ooh, Ultras I personally want to pull, Skull Arch, Fina Lightning, and Exodia Necross. But uh, other than that, there's still some pretty, pretty nice cards inside. All right, you guys. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. And of course, stay tuned for part two of our Dark Crisis Booster Box opening where we open up an additional 18 packs for our Booster Box battle against Magician's Force. And also, you guys, post in the comments below what you guys, your experiences with the Dark Crisis back in the day and the different cards that, you know, have some sort of meaning towards you. The Dark Crisis, the Pandemonium, the Insanity, and Soup! Oh, and the Lucky signing out.